Hello grade 10s and welcome back to another video on chemical bonding with me Miss Martins. In the previous videos on chemical bonding we looked at two types of bonding. We looked at ionic bonding and we looked at covalent bonding. In this video we're going to focus on metallic bonding. So just a very very brief recap about the three types of bonding that you need to know in grade 10. We've got covalent bonding which is the sharing of electrons between two atoms to form a molecule. And that's between a non-metal atom and a non-metal atom. So I said over here, for example, hydrogen and oxygen to give you water. Ionic bonding is a transfer of electrons from a metal to a non-metal. So metal, non-metal, ionic, non-metal, non-metal, covalent. If you need more information about these types of bonding, then please click the links above or below in the description to watch the video on those types of bonding. But in this video, we're going to focus on metallic bonding. Over here, you can see I mentioned that metallic bonding, just like the name suggests, is all about metals. Right, so now also just a very, very quick side note. In your exam, when they ask you about covalent bonding and ionic bonding, they are also probably going to ask you to draw a Lewis dot diagram. Lewis dot diagrams are not applicable for metallic bonding, but just as a quick reminder, remember that covalent bonding is the sharing of electrons. So when you draw a Lewis dot diagram, it'll look something like this, where you draw your, your valence electrons and then you show the two atoms sharing those electrons. And it may result in the formation of a single bond or a double bond or a triple bond. You will also have to know how to do a Lewis dot diagram for ionic bonding. It's slightly different. You have to use brackets. Brackets are involved. Charges are involved. And again, if you would like a recap on these Lewis dot diagrams, click the links in the description below. But let's focus on metallic bonding. So now, as I mentioned, metallic bonding has to do with metals. So it occurs between a metal atom and a metal atom. And we're going to explain metallic bonding by using the electron C model. Now, it's very nice because this section, metallic bonding, is basically just theory. You just have to understand a concept. Now, the first thing that you need to understand is that metallic atoms are generally packed tightly together. Little spaces between the particles, and that's why metals are usually solid at room temperature. Another thing to understand about metals is metals have few electrons in their outer orbitals. Okay, so go back to my uh, videos about orbital diagrams and energy levels if you need a recap on this. But you also need to know that metals have low ionization energies. That means that it's quite easy to remove those electrons in the outer orbitals. And that's going on to the third bullet point over here. It says metals lose control over their outer electrons quite easily because of the low ionization energies. And when they lose control over their outer electrons, these electrons become delocalized. So it's a very fancy word, but it just basically means that the electrons don't belong to one atom anymore. They kind of float freely in between the atoms. They form a sea of free electrons. So the electrons are now free. They delocalized. And what happens is because these atoms have lost their electrons, okay, the atoms are not neutral anymore. So think about it. If you lose something that is negative, you lose negative things, you become positive. So these atoms become positive atomic kernels. Kernels are just a word that they give the, the leftover part, the positive part. So this is what happens. We have the positive atomic kernels. So that's these things over here, the positive atomic kernels. And they are held together by the free moving delocalized electrons. You can see them over there, the free delocalized electrons. And these little electrons float between the positive kernels and kind of stick them together. It holds the positive kernels together. So they act like an electrostatic glue. So that is basically it. That is metallic bonding. Very, very simple, very, very straightforward. And the electron C model actually explains very, very important properties about metals that you need to know about. They can ask you this in your exam. So why are metals good electrical and thermal conductors? So remember, Electrical conductor means it can conduct electricity. So think about a copper wire that we use in a circuit. It can conduct electricity. Copper is a metal. We've also got thermal conductors, thermal meaning heat. 
So when we think, if you think about how you make food, the pans that you use, they're made of metal. Why? Because they're good thermal conductors. They can conduct heat. And the reason why metals are good electrical and thermal conductors is because of the free electrons. Remember, those electrons are delocalized, which means they are mobile. Mobile means that they can move. And as soon as electrons can move, electrons can carry charge. And as soon as you can carry charge, you can conduct electricity. Also, because the electrons are free to move, they can also carry heat. They can conduct heat. They carry kinetic energy from one part of the metal to another, which is why obviously if you're cooking pasta on the stove, the whole pot gets hot, the handles get hot, you can't touch the handles because of the little electrons. They're mobile, they're delocalized, they carry the kinetic energy from the base of the pot where the heat source is coming from, to the handle. Okay, so that's how that works. And another property that the electron C model can explain is the malleability and ductility of metals. So remember, to be malleable, that's when we can flatten a metal into a thin sheet. And ductility is when we can stretch it or roll it into a wire. You need to know that. And why can we do this? Because again, electrons are delocalized. They are free to move. And that means that these atoms can slide over each other when they have it. That's why we can press metal flat like aluminum, like tin foil, or stretch it into wires like copper, the ductility. Okay, so be aware of those. Now I'm quickly going to show you how they can ask um, metallic bonding in a paper. Over here, we can see a departmental paper. This is a final paper. And they say, study the diagram below. They give you substance A and B. And they show the structures of these two different substances. They say, answer the questions. 6.1 says, choose the substance A or B that describes the following. 6.1.1, metallic structure. So if you look at these two different substances, you can clearly see that this represents the electron C model that I showed you a few minutes ago. So metallic structure would have to be substance A. And then structure of magnesium chloride, that would be substance B. You can see here that it's positive and a negative. So this is the cation and the anion. This is ionic bonding. So if you need to brush up on ionic bonding, remember to check out the links in the description. And then they say explain how the type of bond in substance A forms. In other words, explain how metallic bonding works. And it's literally just what we went through. So here's the memo's answer, just so you can see. It is formed when a pool of delocalized electrons surround the positive metal iron core. So instead of saying positive kernel, they say positive metal iron core, which is probably be, probably better, metal iron core. Okay. And why is it positive? Because remember, the electrons have been lost, not lost, but they are separated from the atom and they are now delocalized. Here's another example. They give you a bunch of substances over here and they say write down a substance from the list above that is the following. I've only screenshotted these two questions. A molecular structure, so that would be either CO2 or H2O. Those are molecules, just for your information. Again, if you want more, um, you know, more examples on this, look at the links in my description. And then in metallic structure, so we can look through the list over here, and this iron, that's the metal in the list. So metallic structure would have to be Fe. Fe, the, the metal, iron, contains metallic bonding within the structure. So it's not necessarily a metal bonded to another metal. That's something that I need you to understand. It's within the metal, all the atoms, all the iron atoms within iron that are bonded together or attached together. That is what metallic bonding is. So it's not like one metal with another metal. It's the um, the atoms of the same metal bonded to itself. I hope that makes sense and I hope that has helped you. Remember to subscribe to my channel if my videos are helping you and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.